Thank you. There's a saying, if you want to be successful in the world, you should follow your passion and not a paycheck. Or in the words of Steve Jobs, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. I got lucky. I happened to find my passion for construction whilst trying to pursue a paycheck. But you know, passion isn't the only thing I've learned that you need to succeed. You also really need to push the boundaries of your comfort zone because it's then that you find out what you are truly capable of. Looking back, I'm not sure why I chose the construction industry. I do know that I didn't like my current job at the time, and I can't believe I'm going to show you this picture. <laughs> this is me up a telegraph pool working for BT, so you can see I wanted a new career. Um, I also did a small bit of work around my house and really enjoyed it at the time, and I had this like yearning to go back to university. So when I seen the construction engineering and management course at Jordanstown, everything just seemed to click. So in 2002, at the age of 24, I took the decision to quit my job and sign up for the course. It wasn't an easy decision to make because I was a single mother. I had two young kids, but sometimes in life, um, you just have to take a risk. At university, I did my third year placement with the Estates Department at Ulster University, and I worked on the design of the first phase of the um, Belfast campus. And I did enjoy the work, but the whole time I was there, I felt like I was missing out because everyone else was working as um, site engineers. And that's what I always imagined a career in construction looked like. And it never occurred to me at the time that there was so many other roles out there. And it certainly never occurred to me that I was um, laying the foundation for a future career. So when I went back to do my final year, um, I started looking for a graduate role. And that's when I started to get worried because everyone was advertising for site engineers. But I um, applied to Farns, and I remember going to the interview being really worried because I was thinking, they're not going to be interested in me, I have no site experience. But then I was interviewed by John Wilson, and he said the client-side design experience I had actually made me um, suitable for a design coordinator role they had at Alt McGavin. I couldn't believe my luck, and I just said, straight away, I'll take it. And I remember walking out of the interview thinking, what on earth is a design coordinator? But in my defence, the role was pretty new to the industry, um, particularly here in Northern Ireland. And in any case, I needn't have worried because I worked alongside a great project manager, um, Daryl McGuckin, on a few of the Alton Gavin schemes. And he gave me loads of guidance and advice, and I was able to soon find my feet. I worked in that role for four years on numerous healthcare schemes, and I think the bonus of that job was I was based on site, so I got to learn and observe everything that was going on, which I wouldn't have got if I had been um, working in, a, in, a, in an office. In 2010, then I was in London for the weekend, and I remember walking by this big major project in the center of Leicester Square, and I saw this little tiny sign on the hoarding for McAleer and Rush. This is actually a picture of it. And I was really shocked because these guys are a mile from my house and here they were doing this major project in the centre of London and I knew nothing about them so it kind of caught my attention. And then a couple of months later I seen them advertising for a document controller and I knew taking the job would be a big step back in pay and my career but I just when I met them I kind of got a good feeling about them. So again I took a risk followed my gut. To be honest, for the first few months I thought, oh, I've made a mistake here, because the job was very admin-based and I felt really far removed from the construction process. But I picked up the courage and I went and spoke to one of our contracts directors, Shane McCullough, and offered him my assistance if he needed. Well, within a week, I was working on the Aloft Hotel scheme with them in London. I was programming, meeting subcontractors, meeting employers, agents, and within a month, he actually gave me the restaurant and the hotel to project manage on my own. And I loved every minute of it, and if I hadn't spoke up, I'd have never got the opportunity. Once that job was finished, then I was approached and asked to take on the bid manager role and help set up our bid department. Um, McLear and Rush were trying to move into a main contractor role away from just their development arm, and I, was really, I felt really excited to be involved with it, even though it was another step out of my comfort zone into an area I knew nothing about. Again, I just pushed myself to be as best as I could be and um, hopefully just try and make a success of it. It was during this period then that I signed up for a master's in construction law, 
because I always had this interest in the legal aspect of our industry. And the masters had a module on contemporary procurement, so I thought, great, this will help me as my role as a, a bid manager. But you know, life is a funny way of working. And instead of sending me down that route, it sent me off in a completely different career path. Because shortly afterwards, I was working on the submission for the Belfast City Council offices, and I noticed the client wanted to use the NEC contract, and we specialised in JCT DMB. So I said to Sheehan, look, whoever you get the project manage, I'll be happy to help them. Um, I can help a wee bit with the contract admin work. I'm not sure where the breakdown in communication came from, <laughs> but next thing I found myself, the project manager. To say I was pushed out of my comfort zone at this stage is an absolute understatement. One minute I was sitting at a desk writing bid submissions, and the next thing I know, I'm standing in the middle of a construction site managing the demolition of a nine-story office block in the centre of Belfast. And I remember the time being absolutely petrified and thinking, I am so out of my depth here, and this could all go wrong. But at the same time, I realised an opportunity like this is not going to present itself again. And all I can do is throw myself at the work and just do the best that I can do. And thankfully, everything um, turned out well in the end. So a couple of months after that, Shane said, once you'd enter the CMYA Awards, and I was, no, you've no idea ridiculous how I, <laughs> that idea sounded to me. So I declined the offer. And we debated about it for a few months, and then about a week before the deadline, he, he called me down to his office and said, look, Mags, I'm not asking you, <laughs> I'm telling you. So I will admit, it did take a huge amount of persuading to get me to enter the awards, but you know what? I'm so glad he did, because I'm now starting to appreciate that my win, and every time I see somebody win in this industry, another female, it is bringing us one more step closer to equality, and we really need to do celebrate every one of those small wins. Um, <laughs> so, it's been nearly 18 years since I first stepped foot in Jordanstown. That is scary. And I have learned a lot about our industry in this time. Uh, firstly, there is no getting away from the fact it is a tough industry and that we really, you really do have to work hard in it. But secondly, um, I've also learned that there's no one-size-fits-all one career path to take. And um, the most important thing is you have to be prepared to push the boundaries of your comfort zone because that's when the magic happens. And every time I have done this, I have realised I am capable of more than I ever imagined. And equally, I have been rewarded. So when I took the the risk and went to uni, I got my placement and I got my job of foreigns. And then when I took another risk and went to Meckley and Rush, I got my bid manager role, I'd done my masters, I got my project manager role, and that ended up with a CMYA. And I will admit, it takes confidence to step outside your comfort zone. And this is where I think women struggle a lot more than men, and it's where we see our career stall. Study after study shows that compared with men, Women don't consider themselves as ready for promotions. We generally predict we'll do worse in tests and just underestimate our abilities. And if we don't believe in ourselves, we certainly won't act on it. And I think New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, she said it best when she said, I am my own biggest hurdle because no one will be a bigger critic of me than me. Women are much harsher on themselves and on their abilities. And in fact, of those studies that I read, probably the most startling one was about women applying for promotions, and they found that they would only go for the promotion when they felt that they met nearly 100% of the job criteria. Men were happy to apply at about 60%. And that actually, the reason that resounded with me was because I remember reading a job advert once, and the roles and responsibilities sounded great, and I thought, oh, I would never get that. And anyway, I don't think I could do it. And I continued to read the job advert, and the irony was it was a job for a project manager in McAleer and Rush. I was essentially reading my own job description and thinking, <laughs> I wouldn't get it. So it just makes me wonder how many overqualified and competent women are out there still holding back, feeling that they'll only go for that promotion when they are practically perfect. So that's the bad news. The, there's, um, there's good news too, because I believe more and more the way women work is being really valued. 
companies are starting to appreciate that the soft skills that we bring to the table, such as listening, conciliation, emotional intelligence, lack of hierarchy, these are actually the qualities that are needed in the 21st century workplace, and particularly in our industry, which can suffer from a macho confrontational environment. And in fact, there was a 2016 report showed that companies with women in decision-making roles actually performed better than those that didn't. And for too many years, we have tried to get to the top by emulating our male counterparts, and it just hasn't worked. I think Christine Lagarde, she's the president of the European Central Bank, she said it best, because she said, we can't, in pursuing confidence, which is necessary for women, try to be like men. We have to dare to be different, and we have to make a virtue of the fact that we offer something unique. And all those studies that are out there, they look at the world as is, but things are slowly changing. Just look in this room today, and companies and employers now are starting to appreciate the confidence and competence are not the same. Women are naturally more adverse to risk, and all we need is a little push to, take, to make us step outside our comfort zone. I feel I've been lucky, as I've had the right people behind me. It was my boss who gave me the little push I needed to realize my full potential as a project manager, and it was the same boss who gave me the really big push I needed to enter the CMA Awards. Because it's important to remember that men of quality do respect women's equality. But we just can't sit back and wait for men to give us a push. We need to do it for ourselves. So I hope that everyone in this room today will walk away with the little push you need to uh, either apply for that promotion or to ask for that pay rise, or equally, just give your female colleagues the little push that they might need to do the same. Because it's important to remember, you're capable of more than you'll ever know. Thank you.